Hey, what's up you guys? It's <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's up you guys? It's me, Treasure, and today I am with my friend. So guys, introduce yourself. Let's see. Right. And tonight, actually night, tonight we are here in Earth Kitchen's um, exhibit. It's called God Heart Gallery. Okay, so Jacob, explain what this vlog is for. So today we're gonna do our project for art appreciation. And we're gonna do a vlog about different arts from the God Art Gallery. <laughs> okay, so anyway, we don't want this video to be boring, kind of you know, academic. So Lexi, I heard we're gonna play we're gonna play a game. Why don't you explain the mechanics for a game tonight? So we're gonna play a game and what we're going to do is to try and um, interpret the paintings by ourselves. Based, based on our understanding, and then whoever gets the closest to interpretation gets some point. Yeah, okay, so the thing is, we're gonna ask the painter itself or the artist itself about the meaning of the art. So, Brian, you decide. Sino magkakalaban? Because they're good. Yeah. Thanks to our VR experts. Okay, so, kayo magkalaban. Hindi, kayo magka teammate. And then, Kami mag ay sorry sorry. <laughs> Kami teammates ni Lexi and then si Jacob kalaban kita and then Brian. Yeah, it's gonna be Brian versus Lexi. Okay, so let's start. Autobiography by the entrance of the exhibit. It says that his paintings depict what he feels or what he wants um, near future, the future, the near future of the Philippines to look like. So I feel like this painting of lovers, instead of instead of being somehow like a flashback memory of two lovers, it's something like how he wants the kids of the future generations to be. So kids who are allowed to play outside without. Um, being afraid of being in risk of any danger and you know just clean air <laughs> yeah so from looking at it my reaction is parang, you know, I feel kind of you know, peaceful it shows parang simplicity the Filipino life the Filipino life simplicity the playfulness so what's interesting and intriguing here is parang yung, you know, yung half phases the half faces. I don't know what, what it could mean, but for me, parang, it kind of symbolizes that parang, these people are not perfect, they're not complete. Each half of the face is uh, parang, their other part, so they need each other to feel happy. That's, that's how I interpret this thing. Thanks, Ryan. Weren't their interpretations right? 
Let's hear it from Sir Nashon himself. Ako kasi ano eh, kumbaga, ito kasing playmate na to, parang gusto ko na sa akin dalawang mag-asawa. Anong ganang, gusto ko ano, uh, pag nagmahal ka sa ako, alam mo yan, yung, yung binibigay ko lahat, alam mo yan, parang gusto ko gawin siyang prinsesa, anong ganang. Parang yung iba, siguro nakaka-relate din pagka nakikita nila yung artwork ko. Lang, simple lang. Gusto ko lang. Gusto ko lang lagi masaya. Ganun lang. So, ano naman po nag-inspire sa inyo? Yung asawa niyo? Yes. Ba? Yung, ano na, yung mga anak ko. Ganun. Ganun lang. Yung nasa paligid ko. Gusto ko masasaya. Nakikita ko masasaya. Yun yung nag-inspire nag, nag sa inyo. Now let's move on to Orange and Yellows, which was also made by Sir Francis Nashon. So according to the description outside, um, Francis Nashon's artworks usually depict um, women representing inang bayan. So aside from that, yung art niya usually um, it focuses on the, his on his aspirations for the Philippines, and it also um, shows the values of um, the Filipinos and stuff like that. So for this painting, we can see a woman in the center, and I believe that it is or in Ambayan, it is the Philippines itself. And as as you can see, um, it is very peaceful, like yung mood na nire-radiate no art, no subject is very peaceful. And with that, I believe na um, one of the aspirations in life of Francis Nation for the Philippines is for um, our mother country to be as peaceful as the subject in the picture. Aside from that, um, you can see that, it, that uh, the artist used um, Vibrant, vibrant colors, and it's very obvious with the title, palang um, orange and yellow. So I feel like with that, he aspires Philippines to be um, lively and vibrant. Um, well, in the first place, palam naman. Um, right now, Filipinos are really vibrant. So I think that's another point that Francis um, is trying to point out or trying to relate to us na parang Filipinos are vibrant na on their own. So, yeah. That's my interpretation. Jacob, you're going down, bro. It's over. <laughs> so, hi guys. Um, it's Jacob here and I'm, I'm gonna give my interpretation for the painting Orange and Yellow by Nas Nashon. Um, as you can see, uh, the orange and yellow is a painting of a Filipino woman and, and it has colors, uh, different colors such as yellow and orange. Um, <laughs> as, as you can see the title, that's, that, that, that's the colors. And the colors is, the, the color yellow and orange represents the encouragement and li liveliness and just the vibrant colors of the orange and yellow. It represents the encouragement of the Filipino women. So basically for me, this this painting is an encouragement for the Filipino women. And you can see the simplicity of uh, simplicity and the free-flowing structure and the painting of the women which means that it flows with the time or something but yeah I think that's the meaning of the empowerment for the for the women the meaning of the orange and yellow okay. now we ask Sir Francis what it really means because yung, yung mood ko that time ginagawa ko to yung about dun sa color kaya nabuo siyang orange siya dyan. Gusto ko lang yung, yung, yung kulay na yan. Kaya, kaya ko ginawa ito. Yung artwork ko naman, itong artwork, kaya siya one eye. Diba? Para siyang ano eh, para siyang about equality. Diba? Pagkakapantay-pantay ng, ng tao. 
hindi lang siya one night kumbaga wala siyang tenga kung mapansin nyo kapat lang yung daliri so parang gusto ko lang iparating na parang lahat tayo hindi tayo perfect parang ganun gusto ko lang na na-equal tayo lahat ganun yung gusto ko iparating So, what inspired you po in doing that? Lahat, yung buhay ng tao. Lahat. Lahat ng nakikita ko sa paligid ko. Lahat ng... Gusto ko kasi positibo lahat eh. Gusto ko happy. At yun lang gusto ko i-share. Na alam mo yan, sa lahat na nakakita ng artwork ko, gusto kong maramdaman nila kung ano yung naramdaman ko kung ginagawa to. Parang gusto ko maging happy lang sila, maging positive lang. Ganun eh. Kahit anong struggle, alam mo yung napagdadaanan. Kasi ito, ano ito eh, uh, in-scrape ko isa-isa. Pag nakikita nyo ito, itong texture na ito, itong mga lines, in-isa-isa ko yan. Talagang ano yan, kung bagay yung pinaka-struggle ito. Pero, ginagawa ko pa rin siyang positive yung kinalabasan. So, dito kami, kasama namin yung mga girls. So, anong game plan nyo? Huh? Yeah. Done, no, are you guys are you guys ready to you know, be defeated yeah, and to lose? You be your... You're gonna go down. You know me, I'm the art expert. I'm very attentive in class. So. Yeah, sure. so you know we're gonna lose. Okay. Okay, <laughs> okay. We're gonna see, we're gonna see. Okay. Up next is Sir Carlo Unchanko's mom and I. So Jacob here once again, and I'm gonna give my analysis for Mom and I by Carlo Ong Changko. Okay, so this this painting is basically about the love of a mother and his son, which is very common in the Filipino culture or any culture around the world. Um, you can see that the that the picture is the the background picture is kind of blurry and it's major. It's like a stained glass of some type, some sort, and and it's very colorful. And for me, um, this this is a sign or this is a symbolism of how the love of a mother to his son is, just like the love of the Philippines to its and the Filipinos and the love of their country with each other. So according to the um, description outside, his artworks are more on the introspect, introspect, introspective journey. I don't know if I said that right, but whatever, you all know what I mean. So um, in that case, they're more on um, reflecting on the past and then um, nostalgic memories. That's what also the description outside said. So with that being mentioned, um, Mom and I, I believe, is an artwork about his memories with his mom and him. Yeah. So um, I feel like here um, he wants to um, reminisce all the memories that they had, the um, the happy ones where they would maybe walk on walk walk at the market or whatsoever. So. Yeah, that's my answer. Here's Sir Ong Chanko telling us the story about his painting called Mom and I. Uh, usually it's all about uh, uh, your expression for your mom. So, so yun yung idea ng ano, work ko. So, parang yung mga juxtapositions ng mga elements is from the rural area. So, yun yung mga ideas ko yun, more on the urban and rural. So parang nagkaka, nagkakaroon siya ng certain mix ng, ano, <coughs> ng mga elements. So yung about the, the mom and I, yung, yun nga yung center, yung focal point ng design is more on the, more on the your, your love for your son or your, your daughter. So yun yung basically the idea. Uh, kasi, uh, yung kasi I have, ano, I, I have a son. Tapos yung mom siya, yung mom niya, yung misis ko. So, yun, so parang inano ko sila. Parang ginawa ko sila subject. So, kasi maklingi yung son ko sana eh, sa, sa mami niya. So, yun. 
for the last painting, but definitely not the least, we have on sessions. So from it, I can see, well, I can see a bunch of kids playing around music in you know a small village. What's interesting to me is the the color palettes. It's it really feels like you know, it gives you this really dreamlike feeling, you know, a nostalgic feeling, like you know you're reminding yourself of your what your childhood is, how peaceful it was, how simple life was. So yeah, that's that's how I see this painting, and that's I think the intention of the author over here is to you know try to bring out your fondest memories, your fondest childhood memories. I think it does a good job. So my interpretation of On Sessions by Sir Carlo Onchanko is that um, since his paintings depict introspective, um, is very, his paintings are very introspective, so I feel like his paintings, both his paintings are of his memories with his, early, early memories with his family. And I just, I feel like this kid in blue is him because in his other painting, in Mom and I, that's him in blue, so I'm just guessing that that's him in blue as well. So, um, this is probably them in their neighborhood. Yeah, they're more of memories, his memories, and it encourages the audience to reflect on what he has been through. Just approach to the um, to my artwork, because parang they're playing para mga children uh, children sila so they're playing their toys actually these are toys yung hawak nila so yun yung parang naging concept nung nung ano so yun din sa actually it's a depiction din nung rural tsaka urban parang kasi yung mga minimal designs ng mga buildings eh and, Actually, it's building and houses, ganun. Minimal approach lang ng design. So parang resemblance lang ng actual na houses natin, di ba? So parang yun yung naging, naging ano ko, re recurrence na design. Tapos nasamahan ko ng mga symbolism, yung mga, yan, yung mga images ng mga, mga bata. Kasi I like children illustration, so ayun, ayun. yun yung medyo close dun sa heart ko eh. Kasi yung time nung... Wait, <laughs> noong time nung, ano, nung bat, bata rin ako, may hiling ako mag-illustrate. So, I want to be a cartoonist sa Disney. Pero hindi nga naging, naging, uh, nag, na, na, naging painting, may, naging painting na nga. So, yun. So, yun yung bali idea nito. Parang they're playing their own instruments, pero actually it's a, it's a toy. Hindi siya, hindi siya complicated, ano. So, yung sound niya hindi yan. So, parang gano'n lang. Yung, yung pinaka-idea. So, medyo, yung ito, medyo, yung, yung bata, yung, yung girl, hawak niya lang yung, ano, wala nga siya pang, ano, diba? Actually, nawala eh. Actually, yun yung idea. Nawala talaga yung pang, ang tawag doon, stick. So, parang nagtatago yun. So, parang nakikisabay lang siya. In, 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 parang in-act in siya lang siya. So, yun yung pinaka. So, what inspired you? Usually, it's, it's a ano, recurrence of my ano, childhood din. Kasi nga, nung time namin, yun yung, ano namin, yun yung time namin na wala pang internet. <laughs> wala, wala pang... <laughs> talagang umabot eh. So, medyo matanda na ako sa inyo, di ba? So, yun yung ano namin. True imaginations lang kami. We use cards. Ito yung mga cards din. Bubuin namin yan. Tapos, yun na yung parang spaceship namin. Ganun, ganun. So, yun yung recurrence nung ano, yung mga nostalgic. Yung past ko, nung childhood, childhood memories. So, nilalabas ko lang siya sa pain. Yun. Tsaka gusto ko yun. Maging happy din. Maging positive din yun. Yung ano, yun. Mga obra ko. We were also able to interview the father of Philippine Art Workshop himself, Maestro Fernando B. Sen. Okay, so what inspired you to teach others how to make art? Because you know, when I was in the elementary school, uh, I, have, I had no means to uh, study painting. My ambition when I was six years old was first to become an artist 
second to become a comedian, and then third to become a priest. But uh, because I have a very intense uh, intention uh, to become an artist, so I was able to uh, get a scholarship from the Children's Museum and Library Incorporated. And then uh, when I finished my schooling, it was really my promise to God na to impart what I have learned from my institution. Kasi uh, I'm a poor uh, boy and I can see this, the, the, the poor people in the line. So I can feel what they feel. May mga batang gusto mag-aral pero walang pampaaral. Meron dyan may pampaaral, ayaw mag-aral. So I promise to myself na pag ako'y nakatapos, ituturo ko din yung mga natutuhan ko. Kaya nung nakagraduate ako ng Fine Arts under the Semilay Scholarship Program, I started teaching and painting, especially in the depressed areas. Yung mga indigent children from Sapang Palay, Tondo, Baisiya. Kasi nakikita ko, maraming mga bata ang gusto mag-aral, wala silang magamit. Kaya, and this is my promise to God na gusto ko ibahagi rin yung, yung naibigay sa akin. Kasi, sometimes, when you do something that is... Uh, worthwhile sa kapwa mo because that is one way of discovering the mystery of our human heart. Kasi pag nakakatulong ka sa kapwa mo, madidiscover mo ang tunay na pag-ibig sa, sa tao. Kaya nga, nakita ko na ang art, when a person is involved in creating something that is beautiful, especially our children, hindi na sila makakaisip ng masama. Yung mga masamang bagay, hindi na makakapasok sa isipan nila. Because I believe itong art, panlaban din ito sa drug addiction. And because the present condition of our country, we are almost standing on the graves of so many drug problems. And I believe yung art, malaking panlaban yan sa, sa mga, ano, mga nalunon sa masamang bisyo. Based on my experience, nagturo ako sa mga city jails. Sa mga city jail, Quezon City Jail, Manila City Jail, uh, Montinglupa City Jail, and then I found out that this is very useful. Kasi nung sila ay nakatapos mag-workshop, nagawa sila ng painting, and then we gather them, we sell them in the Eastwood, and then yung mga proceeds, binigay rin namin sa kanila para meron silang bibigay sa pamilya nila. And then not only that, I use art to teach uh, those people with, uh, with, uh, with cancer, mga cancer survivor, cancer patient, para hindi nila maisip yung kanilang mga kalagayan. Kasi ang asawa ko namatay sa cancer. Kaya na-absorb ko yung kanilang naramdaman. Yung mga nagturo ko sa mga different hospitals, yung mga merong mga chronic diseases, mga may psoriasis, gano'n. Kaya na, nalaman ko na ang art ay malaking bagay ang matutulong sa tao. Ito hindi lang para sa mayaman. This not only for rich people. Because God gave talent not only to the rich people but also to the poor people. Kaya dapat bibigay rin natin ito. Kasi ang buhay natin parang close open yan eh. Pagka ang kamay mo naka-close, magbibigyan ka ng grace ng God, mabaksa. So you have to give it. Kung ano yung nasa, ano, bigay mo, para pagbaksak yung grace po, sara mo uli. So it's a matter of sharing. So, ang art, hindi lang dapat tinuturo yung mga magandang kulay, pag-sketch, no? Hindi, dapat tuturo din yung may kasamang values. Yung nga, kasi gusto ko maging pare yun, no? Kaya hindi naman ako naging pare, but I was able to work in the church for almost six years. Kaya yung moral values, sinasama ko sa, sa pagtuturo ko ng uh, painting. Kaya marami akong mga naturoan, kaya katulad ni Nasyon, katulad ni Borlongan, na nag-enjoy naman sila. At uh, hindi ko naman iniintindi kung 
Kung kakalimutan nila ako, basta ang importante, matuto sila, magagamit nila yun para sa sarili nila, para sa pamilya nila, at para sa bayan nila. So, ang art, um, maganda ang art. Kasi, ayo ako, professional painter ako. I use art as one, as, I use teaching as one means of relaxation. Because doing another thing is one form of relaxation. Kaya tinuturo ko yung pagpipinta para nasishare ko rin yung, yung talent na galing sa Diyos. Kasi pagka nagkaroon ka ng talent, hindi mo dapat isuloyin ito eh. Dapat ibahagi mo sa maraming tao para maraming makikinabang. So, nandun doon yung talagang uh, meaning ng art. Dapat share mo. Because there are two functions. Ang artist, dalawa ang function. Personal and social function. And what is this personal function? You have to make more paintings. You have to sell. Ha? Para sa pamilya mo, para sa sarili mo. Pero yung social function, pag meron kang alam, turo mo sa mga community. Para maraming makikinaba kahit na walang bahay. Ako, matagal pa na ako, nagturo ko ng walang bayad eh. Kaya nga, minsan, yung mga ibang institution, pagka nimbitaan ako, pagka walang bayad, minsan ako naiisip eh. Pero pagka walang bayad, yung ibang artist ang pagka may bayad, ibang artist ang naiisip. Pero, yung nga, basta uh, kailangan sa art, let us make people by using art, by using our art. Hindi lang mag magkikinta ka ng magandang painting para entertain yung mga tao. No? E, e, ano mo, katulad itong mga toys ko. Ito, merong, merong sense of history yan. May sense of history ang, ang mga toys ko. Because nung nabubuhay yung una kong asawa, she gathered, we, we bought different toys for my children. Because we believe na kapag stimulate ito ng uh, ng kanilang mind, no? Kaya ginadar na ano yan, we put in the box, sa may mga box, marami. Kaya nung namatay yung asawa ko, uh, nagtinta ako ng maraming toys because nagkaroon ako ng depression almost nine months. Kasi lagi ko siyang iniisip. Eh. Isa lang naman yung asawa ko. Eh. Ibali ko, meron kung tatlo, apat, may reserva pa. Hindi ako malimungkot. So, nine months ako na-depressed noon. So, sabi nga na ng psychiatrist, Imagine you were able to paint all these toys in spite of the fact that you are in the state of depression. Sabi ko, Doktora, I want to help your medicine. I want to keep busy in order to uh, to cure myself. Kasi if I will rely myself on your medicine, hindi ako gagaling. Kaya I have to keep myself busy. So, I stayed of the house and then I teach I taught in different uh, schools, in different institutions, para maging busy ako. Kaya yung mga toys ko na yan, kung makikita mo, because I like, I like uh, still life painting. Eh. No, marami ako mag magandang still life. And those are also still life. Yung mga toys na yan, sa malayo, ang overall impact, abstract. Pero pag lalapit ka, realistic. Kasi ang importante kasi dyan, kaya gusto kong very colorful ang painting ko because of our condition. Ang condition natin ngayon, masyado tayong nalulungkot because of the, our problem. Nandiyan yung graft and corruption, mga tata yan, yan nakakalungkot yan eh, di ba? Eh kung uuwi ka ng bahay, tapos makikita mo yung painting mo, malungkot. Tulay itim, hindi eh, lalo kang malulungkot. O, para kontrahin yung mga nakikita natin sa paligid, kailangan meron tayong makikita ang mga masasayang kulay para maging masaya tayo. And that is the reason why I painted those toys. Yung mga toys na yung mga sira-sira na yan, mga ginamit ng mga anak ko. Meron akong malaking lamesa. Ilagay ko lahat yan. No, no need to arrange. Gaganunin ko lang. Meron na siyang sariling arrangement. Then I will paint them on the spot. O, kaya matagal nga lang. Pero after doing those painting, I'm happy. Yan. So, what's your message naman po to aspiring artists? My, uh, my final words to uh, all aspiring artists in our country. Dapat, 
when you have a talent uh, not only in painting but in other fields, you have to share them. And then, uh, wag niyong isipin na wala kayong tera, no? Ang Diyos marunong. Mag-pray lang kayo. You pray. At tutulungan kayo ng Diyos. Kung sabihin na, na kasi alam mo, ang Diyos pag binigyan ka ng talent, pag binigyan ka ng talent, dapat practice mo. Kasi binigay siya yan. Pag nakita niyang ginagamit mo, pinapractice mo, lalo ka pa niyang pagagalingin, suddenly. Di ba, ikaw, binigyan mo ako ng gift. Kasi laki lang ng cellphone. Tapos tinapong ko. Hindi mo na ako bibigyan, di ba? Pero kung binigyan mo ako ng gift, kahit na maliit lang yan, niingatan ko, bibigyan mo pa ako. So, dapat ganun. Kaya dapat kayong mga aspiring artist, tuloy-tuloy lang. Kung yung isipin niyo yung mga problem, na problem natin, basta pinta lang rin ng pinta, sabagat ang pagkipinta ay malaki ang naidudulot, naibibigay sa buhay ng isang tao, lalo na sa kanyang kaisipan. At yan ang magdadala sa atin para tayo ay magkaroon ng uh, mapayapang pamilya. Pagka maraming mapayapang pamilya, maraming mapayapang community, pagka ang community natin peaceful, magiging peaceful yung country natin. So, yung mga aspiring artists, kawa lang kayo ng gawa. Palakasin ninyo yung art dito sa Pilipinas para magbibigay kayo ng magandang example sa mga ibang kabataan, especially by using your time wisely, doing your piece, no? pagpipinta at nagbibigay kayo ng magandang inspirasyon sa ibang tao. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so guys, who do you think won that challenge? Sa tingin ko, kami talaga ni Brian. Yo, it was so obvious that we won that. Kasi yung analysis namin, medyo similar dun sa mga sa author, ay sa mga artists, okay, okay. sa artists. Like yung dun sa mom, mom and I, medyo malapit yung sa amin. Eh, eh sa'yo, sa inyo ba? Pero sa amin, nakuha namin yun. Yeah, one session, session was uh, childhood, yun eh. Pero benta yung wala talaga yung nakakuha. <laughs> <laughs> Kaysa na siya, OMG, sobrang layo ng mga kalilayo. So, But you know what, at the, the, the very end of the day, you know, I think, um, you know, if, you, if you read uh, Roland Barthes' The Death of York, I don't think there's a true meaning in yeah. any artwork. True meaning mm -hmm. is deciphered, determined by us, in, in the, the viewers. Okay, so ibig sabihin no, walang winner, loss. Wal walang winner. At the end of the day, lahat tayo winner. <laughs> For creative That's according to purposes lang yun, 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 yun. Pero, kami talaga yun. Sure. Actually, sure. sinasabi nga, ano eh, sinasabi nga ng mga artist kanina, di ba? Masalutuwa nga doon sila na yeah, may iba tayong story dun sa, dun sa art nila. Yeah, 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 that's true. But they didn't, they didn't actually that's... downplay our interpretations so either. They actually enjoyed it. And so that's... we did. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, no, okay, okay, okay. Go lang, go lang. They didn't, they, no, they, they actually they enjoyed people making their own interpretations of their painting. They didn't object to any of it. So, that's... in a way, Parang Barthes, if you read him, he, he, he implies that parang, you know, artworks don't intrinsically have meaning inside of them. What's, uh, who creates the meaning? happens uh, when the viewer reacts to the painting. That's where the meaning is pretty. Tama, tama. That's true. Okay. You were saying. And as Sir Carlo mentioned earlier, I don't think it was put on video it, but he said um, them, they as artists, they just create and create. And it's up to the audience to put interpretations on their work. So yeah, that's basically just the point of <laughs> so basically, the, no. So the end of the day, this, there was no point in the game. <laughs> no. Anyway, so how was the experience for you guys? Like, like see. Well, share? it was nice because going into the exhibit, like from outside, palang, I can see from the windows now. Oh, I see these paintings at home, so they're very familiar because my mom collects a lot and she knows a lot of the artists here. Then, so it was it wasn't very unfamiliar or strange for me. It was almost like I belong. But it was like a very comfortable environment and the people here as well. Um, the artists themselves knew, knew me through my mom. So, 
they weren't very intimidating to approach. Like, sila pa nga yung pumunta sa akin. Sila pa yung nakipag-usap. How about you? For me, it's very fulfilling to know the mi- the meaning of the art talaga. Kasi usually when we see art sa mga pictures ganyan, um, we just research about the, the meaning of the art. But we don't really know what the meaning of the art is unless it is said by the artist. Ayan, diba? So for me, malaking bagay na na-meet naman yung artist and we were able to discover the true meaning of the art. How about you, Brian? Uh, my reaction at the beginning was uh, a little bit nervous when I was uh, interpreting in front of you know the artists themselves. It's parang you know, I'm kind of like uh, insulting their painting to my horrible, <laughs> horrible interpretations, okay. shallow interpretations. But at the end of the day, I was really surprised at you know, how cordial they are, how open they are. Like they didn't actually reject any of other interpretations. They actually enjoyed and welcomed our own interpretations. So you know, I, I was really surprised by that. So, you know, at the end of the day, I've learned that for, um, you know, in artworks, you don't really have to you know, research, study all of those you know wordings that you see the uh, the, the writings you know, beside the, those artworks. What matters at the end of the day is what the artwork tells you. What is it telling you? What does it teach you? What's message is it giving you? It may be different from uh, for other people. It doesn't necessarily have one universal message. Okay, so hirap yung top down, so mga babal- pagbabalik na rin ko na rin yung sabi na <laughs> lang yung last. But anyway, for me, honestly, I underestimated the task of interpreting art and paintings because I thought it was easy. Because parang in class, since, I don't know, parang feel ko lahat ng sinasabi ko, it makes sense and it's somehow related to the artwork itself, you know, parang I feel like I'm going to recite ko in class. But then, here, when I interpreted it, when I interpreted it, like the artworks, um, at first I was super confident, like yung usual me in class. But then, when I heard the interpretations from the artwork, I, from the artists themselves, parang ako, oh my god, sobrang layo pala nung akala kong mina niya. But then, I was really, um, uplifted or like inspired when they said when the artists themselves said na oh parang they enjoy it when people have different interpretations of um, the artworks because it's true naman nga na um, different people have different um, interpretations and pers- uh, perspectives on certain art so yeah overall I really enjoyed so yeah so yeah 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 so are we gonna end this vlog? Sadly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna pass the time to time limit. So thank you guys for watching this vlog. Wow, we're so official. If you like this video, <laughs> hit the thumbs up and don't forget to press subscribe. You can also comment down below about your different interpretations <laughs> on the artwork that we have. Okay, yun lang. Bye, guys. Bye, bye.